Sorry, I'm we're, we're actually yeah, getting a little too obvious. Yeah, it's fine. So what you, you said about the ignorance of Israeli people, do um, you don't think that's a will to the ignorance? They're actually <coughs> choosing not to go. Um, I say that because I, I'm from Northern Ireland. Uh, you know, I've been on one side of a conflict there, which should alter you know, 300 years or 30 years or whatever you, what you want to say. Um, I, I'm a Protestant, um, and I was brought up in a community who didn't know the other side. And I know that was a chosen ignorance. Mm. And we didn't want our education system to set up. Mm. Mm. Or taught Irish history, or taught the Catholic, you know, oppression and all that sort of thing. Um, and in a family point of view, I had relatives who were very hard life Protestants. Um, and I actually ended up having a lot of arguments. We mm. didn't want to go. Mm. We didn't, and then it was pointed out that mm. certain things that we were saying weren't were true. I just blanked it. Mm. And I'll just give a, a, a mm. kind of read, very, just very briefly, um, an experience I had a couple of years ago. I went walking in the Himalayas mm. um, with my daughter, um, and with a group, and I think the group were, were two Israelis um, who had just finished um, is it the defense force. Mm. They were both officers, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. um, Everybody has to go through. I mean, that's right, it's sort of prescription. So it's, they finished their tour, and they're kind of a celebratory holiday away. Um, and I really liked him. I spent two or three days talking to him, and we got on very well. And then I began to talk about Northern Ireland. Um, and I began to talk about how I drew draw par parallels, and then immediately it cut off. Mm. Because um, I did it very gently, I didn't want mm -hmm. to say, you know, what are you doing in, in this palace? Mm -hmm. I just talked about my experience and our people's experience. And, and, mm -hmm. say, and I think there may be parallels mm -hmm. and some worries mm -hmm. about what the Israeli government is. And I did immediately. Um, it was over an evening and withdrew, um, first of all, kind of withdrew from me in talking. And then the rest of the week's trip, they, they, they kept away from me. Mm. Now, there may be all sorts of reasons for that. You know, I think that's maybe the thought that's really a bit heavy and you know, overcritical. But I, I just recognize it's like talking to my relatives, mm. you know, that mm. same. So when you say, you know, well, Israelis don't know about it and young people don't know mm. about it, it's all, you know, they, they couldn't do anything about it. I suspect or I wonder if that's actually a chosen ignorance. I'm Very sure that's true. that mm. they don't know. And, and that's, it. and that's maybe one of the fundamental problems in resolving conflict. Unless they're willing to make that um, leap of perception or imagination and reach out to the other side, it won't be resolved. But, but there are very many Israelis um, who have been through that process and who do want to know, yeah. and who, you know, who, and, and in a way, that's that's. Um, I, I think that's what gives us all hope that, that you know who are working away tirelessly, and who. I mean, it's easy for me, you know, to live in the West and to um, write books which are essentially a, a sort of well, funny and serious. But but for somebody who lives in that society to be critical of it is terribly, terribly tough, and. Um, the, the people who do it, I, I think, are hugely to be admired because they really are reviled. They really have a hard time, and I guess they need they need all the support they can get. And that's also, you know, maybe they are useless. These attempts to change perception by bringing um, Israeli and um, Palestinian kids together, but for, but for an Israeli to do that is is you know they they. That they're making a real stand um, within their own community, for which they will then have to be criticised and um, you know have to defend themselves, and some of them can't. You know, they, they, then they leave. I, I fully agree with you that there is uh, this way for you, but I would also add that there is also another dimension, which is that uh, the the government, uh, the establishment, not just the government, the establishment in general, whether it's the military establishment or the business establishment, or all of whom benefit from the continuation of the conflict in absolutely real terms, uh, uh, impose restrictions on the possibility of people knowing. So for example, this idea that an Israeli 
cannot by law cross over to uh, there is something very willful there it's, it's much easier to control people and people's perception and, and keep them on edge as it, it's, it, they want to be kept on edge uh, if you have these restrictions uh, I think one can feel a lot of sympathy if, if one tries for the is Israelis who uh, I think the height of the reception, the reception, the problem, and so on, is when there is the possibility now of peace with, in the, with their neighbors. And they are in a small country, in, in an area which is all hostile to them because of what they're doing. When there is that possibility, and, and it exists now because the Arab states have made a proposal for a peace, uh, uh, rather than try and reach out for it, they bargain. They bargain about more territory, uh, more settlement, more. Uh, and, and what are these territories? I mean, they don't have oil underneath them. They, they, they're just beneficial for a group of people who uh, build more houses on free land, uh, who benefit from building the wall, which is made of concrete and has all these gadgets and so on, and then sell it to other places. Uh, so, in a way, uh, the ordinary Israeli who isn't necessarily benefiting is having a very hard deal and, and is unable to speak out because he's, in a sense, uh, powerless. Well, the and some do, and, and as you say, they pay a very, very high well, price. One of the people who helped me with my research, um, who, who I met in Tel Aviv, was, it was, it was a young guy who'd worked as a student. He'd been a kind of guide, and he'd been um, working over an area of parkland and you know, taking sort of groups of visitors in this, this sort of beautiful, newly, um, newly planted with pine trees in the centre of Israel. And he said that as he was showing, and there was a little sort of wildlife there and all sorts of things, he was saying that as he was showing people around, he was aware that there were sort of piles of stones that were a bit inexplicable. And he got very interested, you know, he got interested in these stones and started sort of poking around and, and things emerged. And then he found some old maps and he realised that what he thought was a national park to which he was like a kind of park ranger was in fact had been created relatively, relatively recently over the territory of Palestinian villages. And so he started investigating this and he got hold of maps which the British had made. The British are terribly good at making maps wherever they go. And they had these, I, I show you one Raja, they had, they, they had these ancient um, Ordnance Survey maps from 1947 um, which showed the, you know, the, the Palestinian villages and which had then been sort of written over in Hebrew, um, the, you know, the names of the villages that deleted, destroyed, destroyed, destroyed. And he'd been, uh, in a funny sort of way, because he'd found the, this truth out for himself, that people had tried to hide it from him, then became a propagandist for, for um, telling people um, and set up, you know, set up an organisation then to um, tell his fellow Israelis this unknown history which was, um, had been kept for them. And, you know, was hugely revived and hugely criticised, but nevertheless was able to operate extraordinarily, and he got funds from Europe, among other places. Yeah. Of course, now there is a law that is being... Uh, the yes, there is a new law, yes. Which, which may criminalise mm. any celebration of the Nekbe, mm. of the 1948. So actually this guy will no longer be able to continue. Well, if the law passes, but... Uh, you know, we're not talking about ancient history. We're talking about the history which is in the lifetime of a generation which is still alive. It's quite amazing. But then the whole thing is amazing. The idea, the idea that a people would say that because they had some connection to the land, a mythical connection, three thousand or whatever number of years ago, then they must have rights of on the land. I mean, it's. I, I was thinking the other day. It's. Uh, there's no question that Judaism can only be understood in relationship to the, that part of the world. I mean, there are so many aspects that relate to that, but there's no question about that. But it, it just as Islam can only be understood with, in reference to the desert and Mecca and, and the places from which it originated. If all the Muslims in the world say we can only be good Muslims if we possess Saudi Arabia and, and dispossess the people who are now living in Saudi Arabia, I mean, how ludicrous is that to be? And it, it's similar. There is a connection, Jewish people, too, but why should this connection only be brought out by sovereignty and, and uh, creating all this, this mess? It, it doesn't, that's not to say that the existence of, of Israel should be wiped out, because it exists.